Thank you, God. We believe that. Amen? Come on. Yes, Jesus. Amen. We just want to welcome you guys here tonight. Thank you so much for tuning in. We're going to worship tonight. We're going to go for it. Amen? If you guys can, wherever you're at, if you want to just stand, just focus your hearts on the Lord. We're just gonna pray, Holy Spirit, we just welcome you in this place. God, we thank you so much, Jesus, God, that it didn't end on the cross, amen? But that you rose from the grave, Jesus. God, so again, we just welcome you, God, we ask. Have your way in this place. God, draw us near to yourself. God, fill us up, stir us up. God, remind us, God, that you are still on the throne. God, that you are still faithful, Jesus. God, that you alone can save. God, that your power in your name, God, can save our nation, can save our city, can save our families, God. And so right now, God, in Jesus' name, God, we just speak freedom over every single heart, God, over every single life, God, over our cities, over our campuses, God, over our workplaces, God, over our families, God, over our marriages, over our children, over our finances, God, over this nation and over this world, Jesus. God, may we lift you up tonight, Jesus. God, as one, with one heart, God, with one voice, God, with one cry, Jesus. God, and may we speak hope into this world. God, we bless you, Jesus. God, we say all that we want tonight, God, is your presence, God. We just welcome you in this place. God, we say we love you, God. 
just wherever you're at, if you guys can, just begin to lift your voice, to begin to praise him, begin to thank him, amen, begin to just create an atmosphere of praise wherever you're at right now, just welcome him, amen, come on.
Amen. Come on. How many of you know if God is for us, who could be against us? Amen. No weapon formed against you or I will prosper because the battle has already been fought and the victory has already been won. Amen. Come on, let's sing this out. The weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. And when the darkness falls, it won't prevail. Cause the God I serve knows only how to try up. Amen. Cause my God will never fail. And my God will never fail. Sing it out. And I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory for the battle.
How many of you know it didn't end on the cross, amen? Come on, let's sing this together. The head that once was crowned with thorns is crowned with glory now. The Savior knelt to wash our feet. Now at his feet we bow. The one who wore our sin and shame, now robed in majesty. The radiance of perfect love now shines for all. Amen. Come on, sing a church. To your name, your name is victory. No praise will rise to Christ our King. Your name, your name is victory. No praise will rise to Christ our King. Amen. Come on. See your name, your name is victory. No praise will rise to Christ our King. Your name, your name is victory. No praise will rise to Christ our King.
Amen. Come on. The tomb with soldiers watched in vain was borrowed for three days. His body there would not remain. Why? Come on. Because our God is robbed the grave. Because our God is robbed the Zechariah 13, 9 says, I will bring that group through the fire and make them pure. I will refine them like silver and purify them like gold. They will call on my name and I will answer them. I will say, these are my people. And they will say, the Lord is our God. God, we just pray right now, Holy Spirit, God, we just open up our hearts to you. We ask, God, refine us, God. Make us the people that you want us to be, Jesus. Purify our hearts, God. Let us fix our eyes on you and use us to be your hands and feet to the world. Let's make this our prayer. Come on. You see what's hidden under the surface. You see the beauty under the tarnish You will find in fire you call gold You will find in fire you can't mold Find me here in your 
your presence I'm not leaving the same Let your refining fire Purify me again Let the weight of your glory Bring me back to my knees Oh God, come with revival You can start it in me You have a purpose, you see the outcome You have intention, you're bringing freedom You will find in fire, you call gold You will find in fire, you can't mold Find me here in your presence I'm not leaving the same Let your refining fire Purify me again Let the weight of your glory Bring me back to my knees Oh God, come with revival You can start it in me you can start it in me Come on, sing this out New hope, new life, new wine We come together with one breath One voice, one cry Jesus our Savior New hope, new together with one breath one voice one cry jesus our savior new hope and new life and new wine we come together with one breath one voice one cry jesus our savior new the same let your refining fire purify me again let the weight of your glory bring me back to my knees come on oh god come with revival you can start it in me Jesus 
powerful time of worship tonight. It is so good to worship the King together with one voice and one heart and one cry, raising one name, amen, and that's the name of Jesus. So great to be with you guys tonight. I'm so honored that you tuned into the Bridge Central Coast online for a Saturday night Easter service. A big happy Easter to every single one of you guys. Man, we'll definitely a change of plans tonight. While preparing the last week for this weekend, I thought I would do just one message and then we'd broadcast it tonight and then for our other two services tomorrow morning. But how many of you know our ways aren't his ways, amen? God obviously had a different plan and after our night of worship last night, I decided to again read the gospels of the resurrection account of Jesus. And as I read the gospel of Mark, my heart leapt and I knew that God wanted to speak to me through those words. So I read it over and over and I asked the Lord, what do you want to say to your people through your word? And so that's where we're going to head tonight, if that's okay. Amen? And the reason why is because I don't just want to give you my thoughts or my ideas. I want to do what he's calling me to do. Amen? I want his presence. He alone has the power to save. And I want Jesus. Amen? Amen. Again, it is so good to be with you guys tonight. If this is your first time here, I just want to say that we are so glad that you're here today. And it is our prayer that you encounter Jesus in such a way that your life will never be the same again. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Justin Jacobs, and I have the amazing privilege of being the lead pastor here at the Bridge Central Coast. And I say it every single week. Every single week, we open up the Bible together because we believe that the Bible is a story all about the person of Jesus Christ. And we believe that Jesus is the greatest person to ever walk the planet. Actually, we actually believe that he's more than just an amazing person. We believe that he is God in the flesh. And so if you have ever asked the question, what is God really like? I'm so stoked to tell you that you don't have to look any further than the person of Jesus Christ, amen? So why is this important to us? It's important because it means that every single time you and I open up this book, we get to gaze upon the face of Jesus and because of that, our lives will never be the same. Amen? 
Again, I'm so glad that you are here with us tonight. Go ahead and turn in your Bibles, if you have them, to Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16. We'll also have it on the screen so you can read it from there. Mark chapter 16, starting in verse 1, it says this. Saturday evening, tonight, amen, when the Sabbath ended, Mary Magdalene, Mary the, mo the mother of James and Salome went out and purchased burial spices so they could anoint Jesus' body. Very early on Sunday morning, just at sunrise, they went to the tomb. On the way, they were asking each other, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? But as they arrived, they looked up and saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled aside. Amen? Verse 5, when they entered the tomb, they saw a young man clothed in a white robe sitting on the right side. The women were shocked, but the angel said, don't be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He isn't here, exclamation point. Amen? He is risen from the dead, exclamation point. Look, this is where they laid his body. Now go and tell his disciples, including Peter, that Jesus is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there, just as he told you before he died. Let's pray. God, I just thank you, Jesus, God. We praise you for all that you are. Holy Spirit, I ask, wherever each one of us are at right now, God, we ask, Holy Spirit, God, that you just come, that you open up our hearts to your word, that you open up our ears and our minds and our eyes to your word, Jesus, that you write your word upon our hearts, God, that you change us, God, from the inside out, God, that because we have met with you tonight, because of your word, because of your grace, God, because of your love, because of your truth, God, we will never be the same again. So we just say we love you tonight, Jesus. God, I thank you for your presence. God, I thank you for your faithfulness. I thank you for your goodness. God, I thank you for the hope that we have in you alone. And all God's people said, amen. Come on. Well, if you're watching this with someone or even if you're alone, I just want you to say, Sunday's coming, amen? Sunday is coming. You see, Jesus had just been crucified. The one who supposedly was supposed to be the Jewish people's savior had just been killed before their very eyes. And his body had been prepared and laid in the tomb. And three days later, these women prepared spices to anoint his body. And so they went to the tomb of Jesus. And that's where we pick up the story in this passage. Let's look at it again together and break it down because I believe hidden inside of it are three things that I believe the Lord wants to put on our hearts, maybe four. Amen? Let's check this out. Again, chapter 16, verse 1. Saturday evening, when the Sabbath ended, Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James and Salome, went out and purchased burial spices so they could anoint Jesus' body. Very early on Sunday morning, just at sunrise, they went to the tomb. As I was reading this, I thought, how dark and hopeless must this have been for them, for all of the believers. Here their supposed Messiah had just been crucified, and because of the Sabbath, they had to wait from Friday evening when Jesus gave his last breath on the cross to sunrise Sunday morning before they could go and anoint his body. Their whole world just got wrecked in an instant and they couldn't even do anything about it. Their security, their hope were shattered. They probably wondered, what are we going to do now? Did we miss it? Was he really the Messiah? Their world was turned upside down and they were left broken and hopeless, full of fear and uncertainty, not knowing what tomorrow would bring. I don't know about you, but that sounds a heck of a lot like what so many of us are facing today in this world that we live in, especially with this virus and global pandemic that's facing us right in front of us. So many people I'm talking to feel so alone and isolated. They feel so hopeless and fearful of the uncertainty that they're looking in the mirror at every single day. But, everybody say but. 
I want to tell you something today. You are not alone. Amen? Your situation is not hopeless. And our situation is not impossible. Amen? God is still on the throne. And unlike these women and the disciples and the followers of Jesus in those days who just saw him crucified right before their very eyes, we know the end of the story. Amen? And it didn't end on the cross. He rose again. That's good news tonight, church. Scripture says that we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God and that the wages of sin is death. But, say but, but. In Ephesians 2, it says this, verse 4, but because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in our transgressions. For it is by grace you have been saved, and God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus, in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, amen? Not by works, so that no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. So many of us try to just stuff down the past in our lives, the hurts, the pain, the fear, the failures, the rejection, the abandonment, the shame and guilt of our past. And we try so hard, it seems, to put band-aids over them so we don't have to actually face them or accept them by filling our lives with stuff, with material possessions, with fame, with likes, with hearts, with attention, with money, you name it. But that's not how all this works, amen? Jesus says, I didn't come for the healthy, but for the sick. He said, the Son of Man came to seek and save the lost. The first thing that I believe the Lord wants to speak to us about through this passage tonight is this. Number one, we need to surrender our lives to Jesus, amen? You need to surrender your life to Jesus. What do I mean by that? It means you have to surrender and let your old self die. You have to go back to the tomb and lay it to death once and for all at the foot of the cross. You and I can't just keep living in denial of the stuff of our past. We have to finally acknowledge it and put it to death. Amen? We have to surrender to the fact that we are sinners and that we can't do it anymore or on our own strength. You and I need a savior, amen? We need the grace of God upon our lives. You and I can't do it alone, amen? We can never be perfect enough to earn our way into heaven or to deserve the love of the Father. You and I need a savior, and that savior is Jesus Christ, amen? If we're gonna be the people that God has called us to be, you and I first have to, number one, surrender your life to Jesus. Number two, you have to intently keep your eyes focused on Sunday. Number two, you have to intently keep your eyes focused on Sunday. What does that mean? Check it out, verse two says, it says, very early on Sunday morning, just at sunrise, they went to the tomb. On the way there, they were asking each other, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? But as they arrived, they looked up and saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled aside. They didn't just wait around broken and fearful and defeated, right? They didn't just sit there and focus on the negative. They got up, amen? They went back to the tomb and faced death. They went back to bring closure and to move on. Some of us in here today listening right now need to finally move on, amen? You need to turn off the news and think about who you're surrounding yourself by. You need to shut out all of the negative noise around you and stop whining about what you don't have or what has happened to you and why you're in the place that you're in and whose fault it is that you're where you're at. Get up, amen? Move on, because Sunday's coming, amen? Again, we know the end of the story. Stop whining and pointing the finger, blaming everyone else for your situation or circumstance, and just get up. 
Lift your eyes to the hills, amen? Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord. The psalmist knew it. Lift your head today, church. Intently keep your eyes focused on Sunday. Focused on the fact that it didn't end on the cross, amen? Don't let fear and uncertainty rob the life that is within you and keep you paralyzed and useless, dead and isolated, alone behind closed doors. If you're breathing right now, you are still alive, and that means that God still has a plan and a purpose for your life, amen? Focus on the positive. Focus on the what you do have and what you've been blessed with. Focus on the fact that you're breathing and that you have people around you that love you and that you have a heavenly father who knows you by name and who loves you more than you can comprehend. As a pastor, I can sit at home right now, depressed and broken that we can't meet in person, face to face, and I can worry about how we're gonna make it and how we're gonna pay the bills even though we can't meet. Or, I could rejoice in the reality that we still can worship, that we still can gather and still can proclaim the hope and the joy and the truth of Jesus Christ because of the technology we have today, amen? And not only to, just to those who are in our church family, but to people everywhere, all over the world, at any time of the day. I could choose to focus on the fact that because of this, more and more people are looking to Jesus, amen? That Bibles are being sold out across the globe, and that people are coming together. That families are again spending time with one another. That marriages are being restored. That love and unity are increasing across the globe. And the stories of selfless generosity and unconditional love Love are being told every single moment of every day. God is moving, amen? Stop focusing on the darkness around us and turn on the light, amen? Life is a choice. Choose to focus your eyes on Jesus, amen? Number two, intently keep your eyes focused on Sunday. How are we gonna be the people that God has called us to be? Again, number one, we need to surrender our lives to Jesus. Number two, we need to intently keep our eyes focused on Sunday. Next, number three, we need to not give in to fear. Amen? We need to not give in to fear. It says in verse five, when they entered the tomb, they saw a young man clothed in a white robe sitting on the right side. The women were shocked, but the angel said, don't be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He isn't here. He is risen from the dead. I don't know about you, but it's so easy to forget, right? I can be full of faith and full of confidence one day, and yet with one circumstance or one situation, I can be thrown into a whirlwind of fear that literally consumes everything inside of me. Did you know that the most repeated command in the Bible in all of scripture is do not fear? If you've been around the bridge for any length of time, you've heard me say it. Satan can't defeat us, but he can sure distract us. You've also heard me say that we need to be people who don't live by how we feel, but we need to be people who live by what we know is true. Fear is an incredible tool of the enemy to keep us distracted and to keep us from boldly walking in the freedom and the power that God has given to us through Jesus Christ. The bold confidence and assurance that we have as children of God saved by grace. You and I need to remember today to not give in to fear, amen? Paul tells us in Hebrews 10, it says, therefore, in verse 19, therefore what? Anytime you see the word therefore in scripture, you need to read the passage before so you know why it's therefore, amen? So let's start in verse 11. It says this, day after day, every priest stands and performs his religious duties. Again and again, he offers the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. Verse 12, but when the priest had offered for all time one sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God. And since that time, he waits for his enemies to be made his footstool. For by one sacrifice, talking about the sacrifice of Jesus, he, Jesus, has made perfect forever those who are being made holy. Verse 15, the Holy Spirit also testifies to us about this. First he says, this is the covenant I will make with them after that time, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts 
and I will write them on their minds. Then he adds, their sins and lawless acts I will remember no more. Amen? That's good news today. Verse 18, and where these have been forgiven, sacrifice for sin is no longer necessary. Therefore, that's why it's therefore. Paul says, therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have what? Confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living open way open for us through the curtain, that is his body. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God, amen, with a sincere heart and with the full assurance that faith brings, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Verse 23, let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess. For he, Jesus, who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some as are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. I don't know about you, but that is good news today, amen? I want to tell you today, your sins have been forgiven once and for all, amen? Jesus already paid the price in full on the cross of Calvary, and he is never going back, amen? This book that we call the Bible, it's not an invoice, amen? The gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, the story of Jesus and his love for us written in this book is not a bill or an invoice. It's a receipt. It's a receipt that has been paid in full for you and for me, amen? You and I couldn't do it. We could never pay it. We could never be good enough or perfect enough. And so he came, amen? God sent his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for you and for me, to pay the full penalty for your sins and mine, yesterday, today, and forever, so that you and I could know him, amen? So that we could know his love, so that we could know his grace, so that we could know his goodness, so that we could know his faithfulness and his compassion, so that we could know his never failing incomprehensible love for us amen so that we could know and live in the freedom and the peace that only he gives that isn't based upon circumstances or what we have or don't have that isn't based upon what we feel or what we see or don't see it's simply based upon who he is and the victory that was won when on the third day he rose from the grave amen he is risen. He is alive, amen? And he loves you today, friend. The good news of Jesus Christ isn't an invoice. It's a receipt that has already been paid in full. You just need to receive it today, amen? And that's why Paul says in Romans that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you will be saved. How are we gonna be the people that God has called us to be? Number one, we need to surrender our lives to Jesus. Number two, we need to intently keep our eyes focused on Sunday. Number three, we need to not give in to fear, amen? And last, we need to go tell and believe. We need to go tell and believe. Verse six says this, but the angel said, don't be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He isn't here. He is risen from the dead. Look, this is where they laid his body. Verse 7, now go and tell his disciples, including Peter, that Jesus is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there just as he told you before he died. This good news, this gospel of freedom and hope, of joy and the unconditional love of a perfect heavenly father, it's not ours to keep, amen? Christianity isn't about bad people becoming good, it's about dead people becoming alive. And when you've encountered the amazing love of Jesus in your life, when you've encountered his grace and his forgiveness, his compassion and his goodness, his faithfulness, and his peace, you can't help but shout it 
to the world, amen? Why? Because you were once lost, but now you're found. You were once blind, but now you see. I want you to know today, wherever you are, that Jesus Christ loves you, amen? I want you to say that, Jesus. I believe that you love me. Say that over your life. Believe that today, amen? He loves you so much that he came and he hung on the cross to forgive you of your sins once and for all so that you could know him and could walk in wholeness and freedom, freedom from guilt and shame and condemnation so that you could walk with him, so that you could have a living, breathing relationship with your creator, with your savior, with your resurrected redeemer who defeated death and conquered the grave, and who will one day come back for his bride, the church, the people of God, amen? Come on. I don't know about you, but that is good news today. That fills me up. That gives me so much hope and confidence and assurance that Jesus is truly the answer, amen? Man, wherever you're at right now, if you just stand with me, that would be awesome. Just stand. I want you to know today that it's not by chance that you're listening. You're here for a reason. And I wanna take a moment and just ask this. If you're here today and you haven't made Jesus the Lord of your life, I wanna tell you, run, amen? Run with everything in you right now to the foot of the cross because he loves you. He died for you so that you don't have to strive to try and do it all on your own, so that you don't have to stay hopeless and broken, lost and forgotten, bound and defeated. He died and paid the full price so that you could live, amen? so that you could be free, so that you could walk in joy and hope and peace that isn't affected by outside circumstances or by global pandemics, amen? There's hope today, and his name is Jesus. If you're listening today and you want that, if your heart is pounding and you're feeling that tug right now in your heart saying, Jesus, I want that, I want life. I want to know that peace. I want to know your love, God. I'm tired of trying to do it all on my own. I need you. If that's you today, I just want you to pray this prayer with me. And I want you to pray it with everything you've got. In fact, let's all just pray this together right now. Amen? In this very moment, because how many of you know you and I aren't guaranteed tomorrow? Amen? Life is short and someday every knee will bow, it says in scripture, and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Every single one of us will stand before him and give an account for our lives. And I don't know about you, but I don't wanna wonder where I'm going when I die. I don't wanna have to try my very best to keep score while I'm alive on whether or not I was a good enough person or if what I did here on this earth was enough. I want to know that I know that I know that when I'm dead and gone, when this shell is all that there is left, I will someday walk to those pearly gates and look my savior, my father, my redeemer, my creator, my God in the eyes, and I will hear, well done, good and faithful servant, amen? I want that for you guys today. If you can, let's just lift our hands right now, wherever we're at. Just as a posture of saying, God, I humbly give all of myself to you right now. Let's pray this together. Just repeat this after me, amen? Say, dear Heavenly Father, I know that I'm a sinner and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe that you died for my sins and rose from the dead. I believe you conquered death and the grave once and for all. And right now, I repent and turn from my sins. And I invite you to come into my heart. I give you my life, all of me, everything I have. And I choose to trust and follow you as my Lord and Savior. Fill me with your spirit and use me to be your hands and feet to the world. May I glorify you with all that I say and do. In Jesus' name, amen. 
Amen. If that was the first time you prayed that prayer, I just wanna invite you to raise your hand by clicking the button right there in the chat window on the right-hand side of your screen so that we can celebrate with you and pray for you, amen? Maybe you already accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior once before, but because of life and because of circumstances, you've fallen away from the Lord and have not been walking holy and faithful to Him as you once did. If that's you, then I also wanna invite you as well to raise your hand virtually and click that button to the right as a public declaration that today you again are choosing once and for all to give your life to Jesus and to make him truly the Lord of your life. Amen. Our God is still on the throne and he is alive today. Amen. Let's say that again. He is risen. Amen. Say that out. He is risen. Let's take a moment just to worship together again. Amen. Let's sing this together. You are the word at the beginning. One with God, the Lord most high. Your hidden glory in creation. Now name it is the name of Jesus Christ my King what a beautiful name it is and nothing compares to this what a beautiful name it is the name of Jesus
Amen. Love you guys. So thankful that you tuned in with us tonight for our Saturday night Easter message here at the Bridge Central Coast Online. Make sure and join us tomorrow morning, Easter Sunday, at either 9 a.m. or 10.30 a.m. as we again join together and celebrate our risen Savior. Invite friends, family, and let's join together tomorrow morning for Easter. Amen. This season has been a heavy one, especially not being able to gather and meet together publicly. And it's by God's faithfulness and the faithful generosity of all of you that partner with us financially that we are even able to continue doing what we do in loving people and continuing to exist and preach the gospel to the lost and the broken with messages like this online and available for all to hear them. If this message or our ministry has impacted you and you want to partner with us so that we can continue to reach you and others, just click on the link below to give now or visit us on the web at www.thebridgecentralcoast.com. I want to ask you to take a moment today and ask God what he would have you give as a faith offering so that more lives can continue to be reached for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Maybe it's just a one-time gift, or maybe you'd like to partner with us regularly by setting up a reoccurring donation. Whatever God puts on your heart, know this. You're not just giving to an organization that's doing good things. You're intentionally investing in a group of people who lay down their lives to see others find life and hope in Jesus Christ. Your generous gift today not only will not only affect people for a moment, but will change their lives for eternity, amen? Again, I just wanna thank you guys so much for tuning in to the Bridge Central Coast and for listening to today's message. If you enjoyed today's message, take a moment and click the subscribe button on the screen. That way you won't miss a single message in the future. Again, love you guys so much. So blessed for all of you that made Jesus your Lord and Savior for the first time tonight. And again, we just wanna invite you to join us tomorrow as we again celebrate our risen Savior, Jesus Christ, 9 a.m. or 10.30 a.m. Have a good night.